Greetings, my viewer. I bring to you the rest of Kono Suba Season 3. If you missed the previous episode, there is a playlist somewhere on screen. When we last left off, the body swap magic immediately disperses, leaving Kazuma in a perpetual state of shame. Claire bids him a cold farewell during his second going away party. Later that night, Chris visits Kazumba in his chamber of despair. He questions the purpose for stealing away the Freaky Friday necklace. Having come to the conclusion that there isn't anything particularly dangerous about it, Chris explains how if one of the swapped persons is killed during the swippity, the remaining person will become immortal. Kazuma is startled to be suddenly trapped with this information, and they get suited up to rob the palace. He shows off his demonic mask, then they get into a disagreement about who gets to lead. After losing rock, paper, scissors, and becoming Chris's subordinate, they begin the infiltration. The stealth mission regresses into a molestation mission, as expected, and the thieves are spotted. They flee. Kazuma skillfully makes the hallway wet to delay the guard's pursuit. Chris lays a spider web of traps, but Clara waits in preparation. The only escape is up. However, Kazuma remains determined to accomplish the heist while they're here. Chris is impressed with his determination, causing him to have a flashback to times when Iris was nice to him. Kazuma gets serious, defeating Claire instantly and proclaiming himself to be in top form. He bounds around the battlefield, slurping people's juice with his drain skill. Suddenly, Mitsu Bishop arrives to deliver justice. Kazuma uses steel, but faints and freezes Graham Cracker instead. Miso Gusher gets moistened into oblivion, allowing the thieves to continue their mission. To Iris's room they spring, finding darkness ready for battle. Kazuma closes the door. Iris flexes her heroic bloodline as an intimidation tactic. Megumin is bewitched by Kazuma's chic style. The pair are easily tied up. Aqua awakens from her drunken slumber to dispel their binds and orders darkness to attack. The thieves are pincered, but make their way around the inaccurate crusader to steal the divine treasure. They escape out a nearby window and into a puddle. Later, darkness interrogates the burglars with her Herculean grippers. Chris tells all. Kazuma reveals that he accidentally stole Iris's ring. Darkness stoically explains that her ring is only meant to be removed upon her betrothal. Kazuma is shook. Darko continues by stating that he must protect the ring of power at all costs and never show anyone. The next day, Kazuma is scolded by the aristocracy for being useless. Iris outwardly ponders if the thieves were trying to protect her. Her attendants agree that they likely were. Megumin is still smitten, while Kazuma grins in delight. Iris forgives the noble thieves and is also smitten. Kazuma decides to whip out the truth, but Darkness stops him from doing so. Later, Darkness requests words of encouragement from the princess before they depart. Iris lights up at the thought of Kazuma defeating the demon lord. Megumin is jealous. The little girls have a character caricature-esque duel, Iris has one last request of Kazuma before the adventurers depart to visit her again sometime. Back at HQ, Kazuma throws a tantrum in Darkness's general direction, while Megumin writes fanfiction. At the royal palace, Iris's attendants mourn the premature loss of her ring, but it doesn't matter to the princess, who knows the thief's identity. The night of the heist, Kazuma stole more than just Iris's jewelry, he also stole her heart. Kazuma is finally given the grand bounty of 300 million dollars for defeating the slimy guy during their hot springs trip. He immediately buys everyone a round of drinks in celebration. One week later, he and Aqua harass the waitstaff at a local restaurant. The esteemed adventurer Kazuma Satow sensually partakes of his meal. Back at the mansion, Megumin and Darkness are engaged in erotic roleplay. After a brief period of misunderstanding, Megumin explains that Darkness was actually just preparing for an endurance competition. She writhes around in ecstasy. Kazuma is reminded of a particular incident from the capital. He has devious thoughts. Aqua has an egg, a dragon egg specifically. Some weird butler showed up at their door the other day with compliments egg and a shady deal. Aqua names it Zeltman Kingsford, the emperor of all dragons. Later, they visit Wiz's shop to collect payment. Good and evil verbally eviscerate each other. Vanier states that business has been phenomenal after he experienced an epiphany. Wiz only causes problems when she has free time, so he labored her into a husk. Vanier feasts briefly on Darkness's shame, then states cryptically that the shadow of destruction is around her. He gives her free fortune telling as thanks for her previous help. 
help and on Orm. Vanir asks Darkness a few questions, which, much like Kazuma's interrogation during Season 2, only produces embarrassment. Vanir just wanted to have a little snickety snack. Darkness's home and father will encounter a disaster which cannot be avoided by any effort from her. Vanir states that it's probably best if she takes Kazuma to elope at the end of the world. Darkness responds with thanks and leaves the shop, after which, the demon informs Kazuma that he may be able to mitigate this foreshadowed disaster. He catches a frog while thinking about it. Later, Darkness wants to take on Hydra for some reason. She attempts to gaslight Kazuma into helping by calling him a hero and fails. She attempts again by offering a kiss on the cheek and fails again. She tries a third time by looking really sincere and finally succeeds. So now the party is out by a lake somewhere ready to kill a Hydra. Aqua has one of her iconic mental breakdowns. Megumin is excitedly anticipating a glorious fight. Aqua fears for her chicken's future at the hands of the undead babysitters and gets to purifying the lake to lure the monster out. She sleep. It's time. Aqua requests to get off Mr. Bone's wild ride, but is propelled far too high into the air. Magoom can't explode because of Aqua's presence. Aldarp laughs menacingly while gazing at a portrait of darkness. Aqua attempts to go helicopter mode. Kazuma awakens to find he has perished again. Once revived, he additionally finds that all his belongings beside Chunchun Maru have been digested. Darkness was apparently swallowed by the Hydra in order to save Kazuma. Then I suppose Megumin probably tried to explode it. Back at Axel, Aqua takes over the parental role of hurting the goopy adventurers, and so they bathe. Darkness appears distraught about something. Kazuma deduces that there was a reason she needed to slay that Hydra, and reassures her that they'll be able to defeat it next time. Later, at the guild, Aqua and Megumin are scolded for aggravating the beast. The guild babe explains how the capital's soldiers are too busy trying to find and apprehend the famous noble thieves to do anything about the Hydra. Kazuma is startled by his lush bounty of 200 million dollars, so is everyone else, and apparently, Due to some fortune telling, the royal detectives found that the perpetrators are hiding in Axel. The entire adventurer's guild is encouraged to help. Kazuma decides to hole up in response. Aqua bonds with her egg. The rest of the girls barge in to discuss strategy. Megumin wants to use Kazuma's suck skill to fuel extra explosions, but Aqua doesn't intend to share her goddess juice. Darkness and Megalomine have been exploding the Hydra daily using guerrilla tactics, which should help slowly deplete the beast's magical energy. Energy. Kazuma feels that they ought to wait till the rain stops, even though it isn't predicted to cease anytime soon. Megumin scolds him for his indolence, and the whittling continues over the next few days. Today, they were met with an ambush. Darkness sulks in the bath. Aqua continues to bond with her egg, while Kazuma fixes up Darpleness's armor. She gets sentimental in response, but this only results in a quarrel. That night, Darkness goes missing. Kazuma is concerned and runs off to make a few pit stops before the destined fight. Our rough and tumble Weaver foreshadows a fierce battle. Aquar and Mage Man slow darkness until Kazumba shows up with the entire Adventures Guild, ready to help. Everyone does preparations at the command of the town's hero. Darkness poses dramatically in the vanguard. Aqua spams blessings, and the battle commences. Darkness kites the Hydra into a massive conjured bolus, which restricts its movements. Then the adventurers fire a couple comically large hooks that lash onto the bindings, allowing everyone to yank the smelly critter down. Kazuma is catapulted onto the back of the Hydra to suck the juice out of it with his drained touch. He suddenly flung off, but protected by Darkness's solid bod, Kazuma continues to drain touch while he berates Darkness into both arousal and motivation. She begins drooling in satisfaction, metamorphoses into a dom, then pushes the pathetic snake off with a battle cry. This guy dies horribly. Yun Yun saves his corpse for later. Kazuma commands the wizards to unleash a joint effort explosion. It's a pretty good one. Later, they party. Darkness is relieved and becomes sentimental about her bonds with the people of Axel. That night, they find a note from Darkness stating that she must leave the party for good. She bids them adieu, monologuing poetically about the wonderful times they all spent together. The Triad of Trouble parades their opposition to Darkness's leave in front of her family's mansion. Aqua tries bribery. The guards are called in response. Megumin follows Kazuma around town to help him recruit a new tank. She has the opposite effect, though, probably on purpose. That little rat. 
rascal. Suddenly, this guy, whose name is Dust, I think, is afeard. His companion, Rin, has been behaving suspiciously and hanging around a strange man. Kazuma is bribed into assisting with stalking her. They eavesdrop through the walls and find that they are dealing with a class A pervert. The evidence is shocking. Dust sabotages the proceedings by wearing the frilly underwear and urging Kazuma to take pictures. Uh... They're caught. Kazuma and Rin flee. Meanwhile, Dust and the random guy have a classic misunderstanding. Rin explains that Dust is probably in danger from pouring gasoline on a grease fire. We all leave it at that. Rin takes the opportunity to inform Kazuma that Darkness is betrothed to Aldarp. Later, the girls are caught up on the deets, and they decide to break into the Dustiness mansion. Aqua buffs Kazuma with some junk, and he gets to lurking. In the mansion, Aqua's seemingly useless buffs turn essential, as Kazuma becomes the ultimate impersonator, Agent 47. Darkness is harassed by her servants and falls right into Kazuma's trap. She snitches on him though. Kazuma uses his theatrical skills to defuse the situation. Sort of. More like creating another situation to distract from the current one. Darkness explains that her family is simply paying off the debt they owe to Aldarp. She's clearly not thrilled and is just putting up a tough front. They share a romantic moment and Darkness begins to flirt. Kazuma brings up her shredded abs and dies. Darkness calls the guards back in, but Kazuma escapes. He cowers in fear and after crawling around, finds his way into Lord Dusty's bedroom. They discuss the situation and Lord Dustiness attempts to get Kazuma and darkness to elope. Kazuma offers to implement any other solution, but fails. Dusty is mortally ill and begs him to look after Darkness. She careens through the door, and they begin to quarrel. Darkness stubbornly refuses help, then Kazuma makes a somewhat delayed escape through a nearby window. Aldarp eagerly announces the wedding's date, while Kazuma is scolded for making bubble wrap instead of helping Darkness. A dusty butler shows up to inform Kazuma about a planned terrorist attack on the chapel from a concerned wizard. Aqua causes a ruckus outside the dustiness mansion to get Darkness to emerge, but is confiscated by Kazuma. Days later, Megumin returns from prison and is scolded for pestering darkness. She becomes genuinely upset and tries to seduce Kazuma into assisting. She fails. The day of the wedding arrives and Kazuma is enveloped in his duties as a bubble wrap craftsman. Megumin berates him for not doing anything again, but Kazuma fights back this time. He vents his frustration and explains the reality of the situation. It's dire. Megumin gently encourages him to no avail. Then Vanir busts into Kazuma's lair of despair to offer his help. Vanir investigates Kazuma's supply of earthly inventions and offers to purchase all of them. After agreeing, Kazuma makes use of Vanir's infinite wellspring of knowledge by inquiring about Aldarp's shady schemes. He also asks why Vanir, despite being an evil demon, wants to help him rescue Darkness. Vanir states that their interests just happen to align. Kazuma gets the help he needs, and he gets a discount on Kazuma's intellectual property. Aqua shows up to liquefy the demon before he is able to defile her holy dwelling. The dusty butler arrives as well. After a presumed scuffle, Vanir reveals the nature of the dustiness debt. The battles with various calamities essentially bankrupted the Lord. In the wake of the destroyer in particular, farmlands of many domains were trampled. Seeing as the dusty family assisted with recuperations previously, many farmers asked for assistance in their own land's recovery, leading to Lord Dustiness borrowing money from Alder and using darkness as collateral. Vanir states that if Kazuma puts in his entire net worth, including the funds Vanir brought, then darkness's debt can be paid off in full. Meanwhile, she is forlorn. Aldarp is impatient. Darkness reflects on time spent frolicking through the wildflowers of life with her comrades in arms and imagines their reactions to her debt. Megumin is mad. Aqua is cry. Kazuma offers verbal abuse. It's time to be wed, and Darkness proceeds to the church. None of her adventurer friends were allowed in. Aldarp caresses his mustache in satisfaction. The priest doing the ceremony is rather crass with her wordings. Aldarp is enraged. Aqua casts aside her disguise. Then Kazuma goes to pick a fight with the most rootinest, tootinest big shot in the West. Aldarp intimidates Kazuma by calling him poor and challenges him to pay off Darkness's debt. So he does. 
The plebs scramble for the scattering of cash, like vultures to a carcass. Kazuma states that he sold everything to pay off her debts, and explains how he essentially just bought darkness. She collapses due to her masochism. They flee. Darkness is activated and charges the enemy. The guards are deceived by Kazuma's theatrical skills, which allows the adventurers to continue their escape uncontested. Never mind. Beef Lord shows up to serve as a flesh wall. Megumin comes to the rescue as her good Yun Yun grovels at her feet. Goomer's staff is bristling with vigor. The crowd is shook. Aldarp calls Megumin's bluff and orders her arrest. The great demon wizard accepts his challenge. Darkness is thankful. Megumin is bashful. Aldarp orders the adventurers to capture Darkness by offering anything they want. They deliver the ultimate form of disrespect by engaging in leisurely activities. Aldarp's cavalry arrives, but Megumin's explosion cannot be edged further. She begins to uncontrollably erupt. Her explosion does this rainbow pancake thing and causes some light damage to the town. Kazuma hides behind Darkness which makes sense. As the guards pursue, the Axel adventurers elaborately set up a scam to extract condolences and also buy time for Kazuma's escape. The police get aggressive and their violence is turned into a skirmish. Darkness returns to her father's mansion, finding him in a weakened state. She apologizes for the trouble she caused with the wedding and all. Kazuma is called to Dusty's side and he gives him thanks, once more offering his daughter. Zoomer declines, but telepathically promises to take care of her. Darkness begins to apologize again, as her dad, like, dies here, I think. Aqua suddenly zaps him with a sacred break spell, releasing him from a terrible curse. Everyone is shook. The Lord may have been saved, but the vibe was not. Later, in Adolf's dank cave, he beats up a ragged looking demon named Maxwell, who he summoned using a divine treasure. Maxwell doesn't want to continue serving him, but Aldorp remains persistent. He demands Lalatina be brought to him, when suddenly, her voice beckons him. Maxwell is released. Aldorp goes for a big molestation. But it was Veneer all along. He gets a good snack and introduces himself to Maxwell, the Warper of Truth, inviting him back to hell. Aldarp rolls for intimidation, but fails miserably in the face of Veneer's overwhelming aura. He is shook. Max drools in delight. Veneer reveals that Aldorp must uphold his end of the contract and slurps on his succulent despair. They peace out, but not before Max collects whatever emotions he likes the most. Later, Darkness gives everyone the good news. Aldorp has disappeared and they are no longer criminals. Darkness pauses at their doorstep. Aqua deduces that her reaction is derived from the shame of being purchased. Darkness apologizes, but is comforted by her friends. She states that Aldorp's possessions will go towards compensation for his crimes, which include Kazuma's two billion dollars. Kazuma is shook. His women attempt to dig for gold. Darkness is still droopy but is eventually convinced otherwise. She joins the party again and is welcomed home. Kazuma narrates the ending. Credits start to happen. Darkness finds out that she is technically divorced now, and that's the end of season three of Konosuba. Hey, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, other stuff. Patreon, thanks again. Ah, uh, bye.